Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. One of the most powerful forces that can affect us while scuba diving is water currents. And we can use currents and water movement to our benefit on drift dives. And areas with water movement can be beautiful places to dive because that water movement brings nutrients that filter feeders can grab out of the water and you can find these places just teeming with life so it's not unusual for these high water movement areas to be popular dive sites but we do need to respect the ocean water movement and current can be relentless and will always be stronger than you are so it's important that you know how to spot different types of water movement, how to avoid them, and what to do if you're ever caught in unexpected current. The first thing that you need to do to prevent yourself getting into trouble with current is to not let it surprise you and be able to see it before you're caught up in it. There are a few ways that you can expect to see current before even reaching the dive site. If you take a look at a map of a dive site, in a lot of cases you can see some telltale signs of where you might expect to see water movement. The easy one is rivers. If you're ever diving in a river, then you're probably going to see some kind of water movement that you do need to account for. And bear in mind that water movement is gonna be faster and slower in different parts of the rivers. Corners, restrictions, and sudden changes in depths can be very dangerous. Any large area that funnels a large body of water into a smaller space is incredibly dangerous. And don't think that you're safe in a lake or even in a swimming pool. One place where a lot of scuba divers have died inland is around drains in swimming pools and waterways. All of that water is trying to escape through a little hole and if a diver gets too close to it, it can suck you in and hold you down and you are now plugging that hole with all of that water pushing down on top of you. So stay well away from any kind of drains or any kind of small funnel areas. If you do ever get caught, your best option is to try and break that seal somehow, however you can, and try to extract yourself from that drain. But this Delta P situation is incredibly dangerous. Um, if you want some nightmares, then just search for Delta P scuba diving or something, uh, and there are some just terrifying videos online um, but if you're diving in the ocean then look out for pinnacles drop-offs and tidal movement the world's oceans are all constantly moving and then we have the daily tides that bring the water in and out with a wide open beach with nothing but sand that water movement is very simple and quite easy to predict you just need to consult some tide charts of the local area when the water is coming in and then when the tides are going out but if you add a large rock into the center of a wide open beach then the water has to go around it multiple pinnacles and you now have yourself a funnel the waves can wash over those pinnacles, but to escape, they must pass through the middle, which creates a rip current. Walls and drop-offs can create currents when either two currents then hit each other along the wall, and then all of that water has to go somewhere. It can't go into the rock, so it's then pushed up or down the wall. Or a current that's heading straight into the wall can be redirected in any direction, really. It can go up, it can go down, it can go left, or it can go right. You can also find this if the wall is out from a shoreline, then the natural tide drawing out will pull that water over that lip of the wall and then down the wall at certain times, so then you can find those down currents. If you're diving somewhere new, then chances are that someone else has already been diving there before. So talk to a local dive center or an online forum about the dive site that you're looking to head to, and chances are someone will be able to tell you if you're likely to meet any currents in that area, and if you are, at what times you can or shouldn't dive. Mm -hmm. 
You can spot currents in a few different ways from a distance. Marine life is a great indicator for water movement. The first thing that you can usually see in most waters is the snow. You know, the kind of tiny little bits of stuff floating in mid water. If you can see it moving in the water ahead of you, then you can see the water is moving up ahead of you. Another one is those tiny little fish, the really brightly colored antheases that live in the coral. They come out to feed. And if there's little to no currents, then the fish like to come quite far out away from the reef and they'll just be milling around in all different directions, just grabbing some food. But if they're all close to the reef, and they're all swimming in the same direction or they're actually hunkered down into the coral up ahead then there's water movement where they are and these little guys are really useful because you can see them from a distance because they're nice and brightly colored and you can see which way they're facing so if you look into the distance you can kind of see what you're heading into Sea fans as well also tend to face prevailing currents because they're catching things in the water and you can see them from a long way away that they can indicate the potential presence and of course direction of current. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be there but it's quite often there otherwise that sea fan probably wouldn't have grown there and any kind of soft corals and seaweeds and things anything that moves in water just look ahead as far as you can as far as the visibility will allow you and you can see if there's any water movement well before you actually get there bubbles as well either your own or from other divers up ahead or even behind you Every now and then, just take a look at the bubbles and see how they travel up to the surface. If they just do their normal bubbly thing up to the surface, then you're pretty good. But if you see them just wisp away or do something weird, that can give you an idea of what's going on above you and if there's anything that you should avoid. And if you see your bubbles heading downwards, then you're either upside down or you're very near a strong down current. On the surface, you can often see certain water movements and patterns from how the surface is moving and know what's going on down there under the water. If the ripples are uniform and they kind of follow the wind, then you should be pretty good. If there are calm patches between normal ripples or choppy water with very little wind, then that water movement is coming from underneath the water. So yeah, you can see those telltale signs and think, okay, there's probably gonna be some kind of current or water movement in that spot. Boats are good to watch as well. Uh, when they're moored up with a single line, normally from the bow, they tend to point in which direction the current is coming from and how tight those ropes are is how strong the current is. If there's no current, then the rope's gonna be fairly slack. Whereas if it's really taut, then yeah, there's probably a lot of current that's dragging that boat away from its mooring point. <laughs> If you're ever caught in a current, the important thing to do is not to fight the current. That is a fight that you will always lose and then you're just going to end up in the exact same place you are going to be except now you're tired because you've been fighting that current. Some small boats can actually struggle in stronger currents, so you have very little chance to swim against it even with the best fins available. The good news is, is that a lot of currents that can catch you out unexpectedly can be quite predictable and focused, meaning that the water will be moving in a very narrow focused channel that if you swim out of that channel, the water movement should slow dramatically. If you swim straight into the current, you're just gonna swim into even more current and make yourself even more tired. So never try and swim directly into the current to like as an end game basically. Swimming perpendicular to the current is usually your best option. But some types of currents do have some special procedures that I'll get into a little bit later. Currents tend to slow when you're close to irregular walls and bottoms. So if you're caught in a current, try and hunker down nice and close to a wall or close to the bottom 
if it's safe, obviously. Uh, you don't want to just send down to 60 meters because you had to get down to the bottom or anything. Uh, it, it's only if the dive profile allows for it. And the current should ease off a bit. Closer to the bottom or closer to the wall, and it does give you a chance to grab onto something if you really need to, but also be very careful not to just bowl into something like a big Gorgonian sea fan when you're caught in current. Just try to pay attention to what you're being pushed towards. One important thing to think about is that currents don't just move you, they can move your equipment and cause your equipment to malfunction at times. So it's important to keep a level head. It's not unusual for heavier currents to dislodge your mask if you look to a certain angle. So brace yourself for that and hold your mask in place if you need to. Your inflator hose might be over your shoulder or behind your head. So when you go to look for it, it might not be where you expect it to be. Current can also purge your regulator if you're facing into it, which on top of already heightened breathing rate because you're swimming into current or you're not expecting the current, uh, that's just emptying your cylinder even faster than usual if it's pushing down on that purge button. So do your best to stay calm, keep your breathing under control and try not to let your primary or your octo face into the current and then free flow. So just pay attention to that and just sort of have a look, make sure it's not venting. DSMBs are an essential piece of an equipment when there's drift and put one up as soon as you can if you feel that you're being taken away from where your surface support might expect you to be. Too many divers get caught in current and surface too far away from surface support to be able to be seen without a DSMB, which makes it much harder to spot at a distance. So bring your delayed surface marker boy, send it up sooner rather than later to give surface support a chance to see you before you get too far away. All of your equipment needs to be very streamlined when you're diving in current. Otherwise, it can be snatched from your hand or just rattle around on a D-ring and actually speed you up in current because there's more for the water to kind of grab hold of and push you along. So if you don't specifically need it for the dive, then try to leave it behind. Whatever you do bring with you, try to stow it in a pocket and clip it to a D-ring so that when you open up that pocket, it doesn't fall out and just disappear. And monitor your air supply. You'll be surprised at how fast you can drain a tank when you're fighting into a current. And down currents mean that you're actually breathing more gas the deeper down you're taken. So monitor your gas supply and control your breathing. In a riptide, when you're on the surface and the water is pulling you away from the shore, swim sideways to the current. Eventually, you'll swim out of that current's path and you'll be able to swim back to shore with ease. You can see these when there's a straight patch of smooth or sometimes foamy water between normal waves and it's funneling water straight out to sea. So just swim perpendicular to it and before long, you'll feel it start to ease up and then you can swim back to shore shore a little bit further up the beach. If you're swimming along a wall and you find a current suddenly pushing you downwards, grabbing onto the wall can be a good idea to stop yourself from descending so that you can gather your thoughts. Just don't go grabbing onto anything because remember that coral is both fragile and it can hurt you. But to actually escape the current, you really need to swim away from the wall. So try to swim diagonally upwards so that the current doesn't continue to drag you down. You can inflate your BCD to try and help you ascend a bit and fight that current as you're swimming away from the wall, but do be careful and do be ready to dump all of that gas as soon as you get out of that current so you don't end up with a runaway ascent after escaping that current. Avoid dropping your weights though, although it's unless it's absolutely necessary because then if you do find your way out of your current you're then just going to end up on the surface too quickly without your weights so try and keep your weights in place and try and use that buoyancy of your bcd to help fight the current and swim diagonally away from the wall so you can get out of that current and then you can readjust your buoyancy whereas if you ditch your weights you're just heading up to the surface 
The opposite can also occur on a wall dive. Uh, all of that current, instead of redirecting downwards and pulling you deeper, an up current pushes you up towards the surface, which is bad for scuba diving unless it conveniently pauses for three minutes at your safety stop, which it very rarely ever does. So similar procedure, but kind of the opposite. Your aim is to swim away from the wall because that's what's creating that current whilst maintaining your depth. So dump any gas from your BCD and swim downwards away from the wall diagonally. Dump any gas inside of your BCD and once you're out, watch those bubbles above you and make sure that you're not going to start the whole cycle again. So exhale, just kind of see how the bubbles go and to make sure that the bubbles aren't heading back to the wall and then back down towards you or back up to, uh, to the surface. Just pay attention to what your bubbles are doing. If you're on a dive and you expect a current, then dress and plan accordingly. Preparation, your DSMB and a drift hook are your best friends. Unexpected current, just try to keep a level head as best you can. Work out where the current is coming from and how to swim out of the current instead of fighting against it. But if you have any other handy tips for current that you've come across in your experience, then by all means, pop them down in the comments below. And remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com to check out the latest scuba diving news and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.